I'm in a city, I'm in a city. Oh. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is rhop 21 and this time I'm just filming a quick video to show you some of the features in Castle Link and specifically how to use the data logging feature to try to see what your car is actually doing in your runs and get you some data to help you make better decisions. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and I have Castle Link up here. Now, Castle Link is pretty self-explanatory. So you've got your menu system along the top here. And then you also have some other cute things. But just one thing I'll point out before you go in, let's say you don't have a Castle Data Logging ESC, or you don't even have a Castle ESC, but you just want to see what some of the features are. If you go over to this tab, having trouble with your ESC, and then you click here, you can actually select an ESC and then go into demo mode. And that will actually give you a fully functional interface as if an ESC was connected to your car. So you could play around with that and just, you know, just see what all the hubbub is about. But I do have a Castle ESC, so I'm not gonna worry about all that. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and just connect Surly to my Castle Link here. And here we go, you see it's pulling up information and it's, it's identified my ESC as a Mama Monster X. Okay guys, so one quick little addition. Um, so you see here, I switched over to Dizzy, which is using a Castle XLS ESC um, with my quick cat pack disconnect, you know, uh, added on here to the front. But the thing to keep in mind, if you're doing data logging with an XLS EXC, then uh, in the manual, it clearly says that if you go to take your data, but it clearly says if you go to take data, you have to, have to remove the receiver wire and the aux wire both from the from the receiver. If you do not do this, you are in danger of blowing your um, your programming card. So keep in mind, I just lost a wire down there. Where'd you go? There it is. So, got to remove both the receiver and the auxiliary wire before you connect the car to the computer. If you don't do that, you run the risk of doing damage. And you know the, the you know which is which because they're nice and labeled from the factory. Although on mine, the tape wasn't that sticky, so I have to go in and put an extra piece of tape to hold it down. But keep them straight. Got to take them both off. If you don't do that, you can do some damage to your hardware. All right, guys. So I talked a little bit before about all the cool features you can do. So I'm just going to revamp things. You can go in and set your LiPo cutoffs, set your power settings. Always, if you have a Castle ESC, perform your motor tests. That's going to help your motor be more efficient. Um, but you can set your starting power, you know, your timing and everything. But what I'm going for is over here in data logging. If you look down here, uh, first off, you have to enable data logging. So when you get this menu, you can see that there's all these different channels that you want to record. And the key thing to keep in mind is that you only have so much data recording time. So depending upon what your goal is, you can see that if you collect at 5 hertz, I can collect as much as 20 minutes of data. But I'm going to switch this to 10 samples a second, so it's going to go down by about half. So based upon what you're trying to do, you can select this. Since for the type of stuff I'm doing, like for debugging and understanding really what's going on, you want more data, so you want faster. This car is, you know, the, the electronic setup seems to be okay. It was having a traction problem. So five hertz is fine. Um, so once you've collected your data, you see that there's this indicator bar that shows you how much data you have. Now, one thing that's important is that you can set the car up so that you can have it automatically clear your data when it gets to a certain fill point. And it describes this more fully underneath um, the menu here. So if, so let's say you want to automatically have it clear out information. You know, so let's say you can set it up 
so that when it gets 90% full, if you haven't downloaded the data logs, the next time you pop the card, it's gonna erase your, uh, your ESC data. Um, or 10%, 50, you can set what the threshold is. And this is important because for a lot of people, you really only care about the data if something goes wrong. So you always wanna make sure that you're recording data of the last run. But for people like me, you know, I, I, I don't want to delete anything that I'm not ready for. So I just have it set to disable. But, you know, that's a personal call. All right. So now you're actually at this point. So click download log data. You can see it's reading from your car. And bam, now you have a castle data link plot. So I'll go ahead and make this full screen to make it easier to see. Actually, I won't make it full screen. I don't know if it's any easier to see. <laughs> All right, so now here, so for a lot of guys, this just looks like a big jumble of mess. And a lot of guys who ask me to give them opinions about their setups will just send me like a screenshot of this right here. Problem is this, they, this doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Now you do have your overview data down here, so you can see that you know what your maximum voltage, minimum voltage, max ripple, minimum. So you can kind of get some some really top level information about the run. But this is where all the meat is. So if you zoom in over here, you can see that on this plot, now your colors might be a little different depending on how you set things up. But I have the motor output as being the blue. So since I'm speed running, I know that my, the things I'm concerned about are when my motor output goes to near 100%. So here I can see that there's one, two, three, four big peaks. So there's four passes in here, or four attempts at passes. So I can take my mouse and I can click and drag into this area. And that gives me detailed data. So I can move this around a little bit. So this actually tells me exactly what was going on during my run. So let me go ahead and zoom this in one more time to make the data a little bit bigger. So now I can look at this and I can see a lot more closer detail as to what was going on inside my run. The red line up here, this is my voltage. This line right here is the ESC temperature. So we can see that my voltage you know, it was nice and high, so a fully charged battery. ESC temperature, you know, nice and cool. You know, it was around 150 degrees here. So, I mean, that's about what you want. Uh, you don't want any too much hotter than that. So th I had a few passes before this, so that it did heat up a little bit, but it's still within a good range. So down in here, this plot is my ripple voltage. So you can see the ripple starts off at nothing and then once i start to come on the power it comes up and it's going up to a maximum of about 2.3 volts which is not great but it's less is less than 10 percent of the maximum voltage so that's actually you know that's pretty decent usually you want it to be you know 10 to 15 percent um maximum you want to see in the run is like 20 percent so an ESC without a cat pack, you're probably going to be, you know, running around 15 to 20%. If you got a decent cat pack, it's probably going to be 15% uh, or less. Depending upon the size of the pack, you can actually take that down way low. But, um, you know, so here, so in this case, even though I've got an eight capacitor pack in here, this was an early prototype and I've beaten the snot out of this thing. So I've actually blown a few caps inside of this pack here. So. Uh, I, I have a meter where I can actually measure the capacitance of the pack and watch it over time. And I figured that three of the five, three of the eight caps inside of this pack have blown themselves. So I haven't replaced it yet because I actually want to see how a pack that has damage still protects the system. And as you can see, five eighths of the pack. In this case, you know, still gives me pretty decent protection. So I'm still at less than 10% ripple. 
you know, but of course the current only got up to about 93 amps. So, but just like I was saying, looking at the data really quickly, I can see the RPM coming up in this run. So really light on the throttle. So the black line, oh, I don't have it turned on. There we go. All right, hold me so back in here. All right, so the nice thing about the CastleLink software is that you can move around in the data pretty quickly. So that helps you really focus in on different parts of your run. But now you can see this little black line. This is what my throttle input is. So your throttle starts off at, this is neutral. So it was easy on the throttle, easy on the throttle. Then I start to ramp up on the throttle. You can see my power jumped here. Then the way that the ESCs respond, they give you power to match an RPM that corresponds with what your trigger pull is. So I got on the throttle, it jumped on the power to rev up a little bit, but then when it got to the right RPM, it actually pulls the power back a little bit. So I had a little bit of a dip in my throttle, it pulled back, I got back on the throttle, it went up again, and then I goosed it. And at that point, the current came way up, and I spun out. <laughs> and you can see the RPMs, like again on the throttle right here, and this flat spot I'm following here is the RPMs. And when I got really got on the throttle, you see the RPMs really jump up, and then they go down to nothing. Because I spun out, the car spun, and then I get down. So in this case, with this X01, the car, I, I, I'm having problems managing my power. I'm actually trying to push more power to the ground than the car can handle. So I'm, I, I think it's a driver technique issue. I think I'm just, with, the, with my other car, I'm able to, because it actually weighs quite a bit more, so I get more traction. So I'm able to be a lot heavier on the throttle. This car, I have to be a lot more gentle, so I'm still learning it. But you can see, it spins out, so you see the RPM jump up. Then I go on a brake, and it goes hard brake. Notice the blue plot here goes all the way to 100%, and that's just an indicator that you're in max braking. Then I come back down, you see the RPMs fall really quickly. And that's about it. So that was that run. So looking at this data, you know, just from this plot, you can tell a lot of things. Like you can see, you know, what your actual throttle was. You can see how the car responded to your throttle. You can see how healthy your ripple current was. This is important because of, for a lot of guys, if you're really pushing out the end, you can see that when you get on the power, as your current goes up, your voltage goes down. The higher you get on the current, the lower your voltage pulls down. That's called voltage sag. Usually the ripple, the ripple voltage is how much your voltage is varying when the power's coming out. And that's usually at its worst between about 50 to 70-ish percent of your, your power output. So if you look here, I only made it to 57% or off, just shy of 58% power output before it, uh, well, actually it's like 60%. So the ripple was actually you know, at about what its maximum should be, but I never got on full power. So until you get into braking, but that's different. So I'm not able to put the power up to the ground that I'm making yet. The car's got too much juice. So I could fight that a couple of ways. I could actually limit the torque that I put down on the motor inside the castle setup. Let's go back over here. So if I go back here, I could limit the output of the car. So there's a torque limit in here. I could do that. Or I could, um, you know, change my throttle curves so that I actually limit the amount of power that comes through. So, I mean, there's games I could play with how I want to apply the power to use my electronics to help me, or I could just practice more. So right now I'm leaning towards practice more. But there's also a couple other little things that are going on with this car that I think may be contributing. Um, but that's a whole different video. <laughs> All right. So now that I have this data log here and I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure it out, unless I get stuck, I, I, 
or I want someone else to take another look at it. How do I actually save this to send it out to somebody? Okay, so if you go over here to the file menu, you click on file, save data. And now you have this description box that comes up and you can put in whatever text description you want. And this is where you put notes to yourself. You click there, okay. So now you type in the name that you want to save the file in. You click save, put in whatever directory you want. And then bam, you have saved your data. And I'm not going to save this because I already saved it before. So, but let's say you want to just send a picture of it. There's a thing right here where you can do export image. And that will basically do a screenshot of what you have. Um, you can also print from here directly. So if you want to print this plot, send it to someone, you can do that. So there's a lot of nice features buried in here. So let's say you've zoomed in and now you don't want to see this anymore and you want to go back out. I've learned when well, you can right click on here and you can do undo all hand zoom. Or if you just click one of these boxes down here, it'll automatically reset the view as well. So again, you can just go in, pick out a group of the data that you want to look at, zoom right on in, see what the car was doing. And have yourself a great day. So let's see if I can find my maximum current. Because I did, oh, that was it. I got up to 93 amps. So let me say this car is barely even breathing hard. You know, I bashing, I've gotten like 160 amps and I still wasn't breathing hard. So I'm not putting my power down. You know, I've got, I've got way more power going to the ground than I can actually handle. So again, this is a technique issue. And this is, is a reason why you actually have to get out there and you have to do passes. Because if you don't do passes and you don't practice, then you're not going to get your technique down. So I, I zoomed in on this little section right here because I wanted to see, you know, a section like going apart throttle. You know, what was the ripple looking like? What's the RPMs looking like? And again, the ripple looks really good. You know, and this especially looks really good on a partially functional pack. see in here the rpms are on this plot see my current power spiking here voltage is coming down correspondingly so this is all looking like it should and this is another fail fast where i come in get on the rpms are coming up nice and nice and then i goose it at the throttle and then it spun out again so power comes up too much power spin the wheels, spins out. So again, I can't really blame the car for this. This is this is driver. Well, he's partially driver. Okay. All right, guys. So I hope you found this video useful. So if you have some interesting data logs that you want to send me, reach out to me on social media. I'll tell you how to get a hold of me. But as always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Our House 21 signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. I do have a little bit of breaking and a little bit of fixing I have to do. Well, I did a little bit of breaking at the Run DMV event, the last one of the season here yesterday. But not that much fixing to do. But before the weather completely turns bad, I'm going to begin out trying to do a little bit more testing. So you'll see me trying it again. All right. Okay, guys. So don't forget to check me out on all the social media out there. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You guys know how to find me. So... And if you have questions about your data logs or you want me to take a look at something for you to give you a little bit of advice, just go ahead and reach out to me via social media and you know, we'll, we'll try to figure some things out. I mean, and these plots can tell you a lot of information, but the real stuff, the hardcore stuff comes in from the actual data logs. So I'll, um, I'll make another video about that to show you how to open up the data logs in Microsoft Excel and how to get really fancy with it. Okay, guys, our house 21 signing out. Peace.